this video, I'm going to be going over some of the key concepts that we need to understand in order to study straight lines. Now, straight lines are a very important topic, and it overlaps with a lot of other mathematical topics, so it's something you want to be able to understand. Now we're going to start this topic with a slight recap of coordinates, because coordinates are extremely important for drawing straight lines. If I've got the coordinate 2, comma 3, that is just a compressed way to say my x value is 2 and my y value is 3. So if I wanted to plot this on these, this pair of axes, then I'm looking at where my x, my x axis is 2 and my y axis over here is 3. So I want it to be 2 on the x and 3 on the y. So my coordinate would go there. Now, a lot of people do get confused but with the order here, and of course, in theory, there's nothing special about the order, but we as mathematicians have all agreed that we're always going to put our coordinates in that order, because if we didn't, then things would be a lot more confusing. So you just need to remember that the first one is the x value, the second one is the y value. It might help to have some kind of mnemonic, like through the hallway up the stairs is one that's quite common, just to help you remember the x comes first. Of course you could also remember the alphabet, x comes first in the alphabet, then y. There are a few ways to go about that. But we're going to plot 2, then 3, and put it there. Similarly, we can do the same with 3, 4. 3 along, 4 up. 0, 1 is 0 along, 1 up. And negative 3, negative 2 is negative 3 along, then negative 2 on the y-axis. So that ends up there. Now you notice here that these appear to be in a bit of a line, so we can draw that line. We can show that all these points are lying on this particular straight line. Now we want to give this straight line a name. We want to give it a rule that it follows. And if we look at these coordinates, we can see the rule that's being followed. Each time the y coordinate is one more than the x coordinate. So 3 is one more than 2, 4 is one more than 3, 1 is one more than 0, negative 2 is one more than negative 3. So that's the rule we have here. And more importantly, that would be true for absolutely any coordinate on the line, not just the ones we've already given. So if I instead consider x as a half, and I go up to the line, I'll see that when x is a half, y is one and a half. So again, we're one more than the x value. If I go to negative one and a half and go down, then y is now negative a half. And negative a half is one more than negative one and a half. If I went along a third, then I would see that this line here, we're getting to y is one and a third. So again, the coordinate one, sorry, the coordinate one third one and a third is on this line. So that gives us two important facts about this particular line. The first fact is that every single coordinate on the line follows this rule. And the second point is that every single coordinate that follows this rule is on the straight line. And so that's where we get the really sensible name for the straight line, y equals x plus one. When we call the line, y equals x plus 1, we're literally saying y is the x value plus 1 every time. So the y value is 1 more than the x value. It's a very sensible name for what we're looking at here. And we call this a linear equation. We call it an equation because it's got an equal sign in it. And we call it linear because it's describing a straight line. Now, not all equations are linear. So on the left hand side there, I've got some examples of equations that are linear. The key point with a linear equation is that there are a certain number of x's, a certain number of y's, and maybe some constants, so maybe some values without x or y, but nothing else, and they've just been added together. Nothing more complicated going on. We can have fractions, we could have thirds, but the x and the y value 
you can see, are not being changed in any way. Whereas on the other side, we've got some more complicated things going on. So if we decided to try and sign the x, find sine of x, then that would be something too complicated, so it's not linear. If we're trying to do multiplication instead of adding, that stops it being linear. If we try to square our x or our y, that stops it being linear. All of these are still equations, and we can still graph these equations, but the key difference is these would not make straight lines, which means we do not call them linear. We have to come up with other names for these later on. Today we're only focusing on the linear equations, the equations that give us straight lines. Now I also want to uh, make a point that there is a very, very strong connection between the study of linear equations and the study of linear sequences. Again, we're using the same word linear here. It shouldn't be a surprise that they are very, very closely connected. In fact, using proper mathematical terminology, we would say that equations are a generalization of sequences in this case. So just to make some of the differences clear, with linear equations, we are normally using x and y. We can use other value variables. We can use other values. That's absolutely fine. Nothing stopping us using other letters. But we tend to use x and y to remind us that this is a graph, to remind us that we've got an x-axis and a y-axis. So quite often, those are the values we end up with. With linear sequences, we quite often use n instead. Again, could use any other letter. Could use x. Could use y. Could use a. But we tend to use n. The other key difference is that when we're talking about linear equations, and this is the really important difference, the variables can take any value. Any value. So they could be fractions, they could be negatives, they could be thirds. That's the key difference here. Because with linear sequences, we are only talking about positive integers. We're only talking about positive integers. So here we've got two things that look very similar, but this one is a, an equation and this one is a sequence. So you can see you've got 2x minus 3 versus 2n minus 3. With an equation, I would like to look at that on a graph for all possible values of x. So I would like to know what y is when x is root 2. I would like to know what y is when x is a half. I would like to know what y is when x is negative 3 fifths. And I can see all that information from this graph, because no matter which value I want, even if it's something really complicated, like a square root, I can find that on the x-axis and go down and find what it would be. Whereas with a sequence, I'm only interested in when n is a positive integer. So I'm only actually interested in a few points where the x is positive and the integers, and they have to be integers. So in this case, I don't care xn would be when n is a half, because we can't have a half term in a sequence. It doesn't make sense. We count up the first term, then the second term, then the third term. So we're only interested in the positive integers here. Whereas with an equation, we want all the information in one go. OK, so here's an example of a linear equation. If I'm right, then we should be able to plot this, and we should be able to get a straight line out of it. To help us plot equations, it is very useful to have what we call a table of values. And so this just gives us some x-coordinates. We then find the y-coordinates and put that in the table, and then we can plot these coordinates. So if we've got x as negative 2, I can substitute that into my original equation. 2 times negative 2 plus 1. That's negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. And that then gives me a coordinate to plot. We've got x as negative 2 and y as negative 3, so we can go negative 2, negative 3, and that's where my coordinate's going to go. If we do the same again, if x is negative 1, then we've got two lots of negative 1, plus 1 is negative 1, 
So we're going negative 1, negative 1, flatten there. If x is 0, then you've got two lots of 0 plus 1, which is 1. And we can plot that coordinate 0 in, 1 up. And for the last two, we're not quite going to be able to fit that last coordinate on the screen, but we know it's there. Okay, and this isn't the whole line. That's the point that I really want us to be clear on. This is not the whole line. These are just some of the values on the line. In theory, you only need to plot two points to draw a line. I would always advise to do at least three in case you make a mistake. And four is even better. It's just slightly less likely to make mistakes if you've got four coordinates. Because you can see that these are clearly on a straight line and I can quite easily draw that line on if I had a ruler. So I've used the equation and I've drawn a line of that equation. So every single coordinate on this line will follow the rule 2 times the x value plus 1 gives me the y value. Next one, I've now got negative 2x plus 1. So I'm going to follow the same procedure. I'm going to do negative 2 times negative 2, which is all positive 4. Let's be careful there. So remember, a negative value times a negative value gives us a positive value. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. We then do negative 2 times negative 1, which is positive 2, plus 1 is 3. And my coordinates are coming out in the wrong order, but it doesn't matter. We can carry that process on, plot all of these coordinates, and draw on the line. And one final example, we've now got a half. So a half is just a number, so we can still have a half times x and still make this a linear equation. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's definitely linear, and we can follow exactly the same procedure. So we're going to do negative 2 times a half, which is negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. And I can plot that on. If I'm doing a half times negative 1, that's negative a half. Plus 1 is a half, and so we can plot that on. If x is 0, we've got a half times 0, which is just 0. Plus 1 is 1. And then we plot the last two similarly and draw the line. Now, hopefully, your knowledge of sequences is going to be helpful here, because we know that when we have sequences and it's a half n, we know that that's the thing they're increasing by. And if you notice here, that's exactly what's going on. With each line, we are increasing by a half. So our knowledge of sequences is going to be helpful when we later get into more studying of straight lines. OK, the key points from this video. Linear equations can be used to describe coordinates on straight lines. Linear equations are equations with only two variables, and what I'm saying is no fancy operations. So it is just a multiple of x, a multiple of y, and maybe some other numbers. Nothing else being involved. Linear sequences and linear equations are very closely connected. The main difference is that equations show the relationship for all numbers, not just positive integers. And if we are given the equation, we can draw a table of values to help us see which coordinates we need to plot to draw the line.